Good evening. Let's see how long it takes us to get started. Hello, hello. Let me know when you pop on. Watching down below here to see if I'm on. Hey ladies, let me know when you pop on here. See when I see the comments. Hey ladies, let me know when you pop on here. See when I see the comments. Hey ladies. Gonna wait a few minutes, see if we have some popping on with us. Hey, Joanne, you're the first one. Says, I finally found you live. I'm glad you did. Good to see you here. Hello, Cindy, Kathy. Been a gorgeous day here in the Smokies today, but a little bit cold. This weather's unreal. We can't seem to get summertime or spring started here. Usually by this time of the year, it's warm enough for us to start planting things. Have mowed the yard a couple of times, but not much else. That's been it. Been cold. Hey, Trina. We're going to wait just a few more minutes. See where we're going tonight. Seems like I'm always running behind when I try to get a live set up. Something comes up. Let's just get wait a couple more minutes. A lot of you have been asking for crackle, and we're going to crackle tonight. I'm going to show you how that I crackle. When I want to crackle a piece of wood or something, I'm going to show you how that I do that. I've done it the same way for 30 years, so I've had crackle for a long time. I'm not even sure the one I use is still available, but I think it is. I'm going to show you a piece here that I have. First, I'm going to show you what some things I've been uh, working on this this week. Or yesterday. I've been doing eggs today. These. I've been doing these today. Okay. Lots of Easter things going on still. And I'm about tired of it. So I'm ready to move on to something else. I've done rabbits until they run out my ears. But I've done these eggs. Found these eggs at Hobby Lobby already in colors and they came like this in all different colors Hobby Lobby has them and they're some kind of plastic I'm not sure what they're made out of might seems like paper mache but I'm not sure hi Donna thank you ma'am here's another one I've done today I've done these I've got one more to show you and I've done this one this design this one You'll never guess, but this is a candle holder turned upside down. Okay, I found these at Hobby Lobby too. And it's a glass candle holder, and all I did was paint it and then turn it upside down to hold the egg. Okay, so you can see. This one I did the flowers that I printed on one of the little rabbits. I put those flowers on. I printed these flowers and then did them. This one is just black and white stripes. This one, this one I painted white. For when done it, it was a color, and I painted it white and then put the black on it and the gold. This one was this pink color that you see in the pink, and I just put the black on it. And this one was uh, pink, this pink, and I added these two colors to it and done it. Okay, so I'm going to set those back out of the way. I'll get those listed tomorrow in my shop tomorrow. Hmm. Hobby Lobby finally got rabbits in. If any of you ladies have been waiting on the rabbits, they finally got them in. 
We got the big ones, all different sizes. I didn't see any of the little ones at our Hobby Lobby, but they do have the big ones. So I'm I'm doing working hard trying to get some done. I've got one going out tomorrow. Uh, yesterday I counted up this week. Last year I sold 110 rabbits on Etsy through the season last year. That was a lot of going. Some of them I still sell in the fall. Okay, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what we're doing. Get this out of the way, and I'm going to show you. My son made me some boards. You can see how this one's bowed. He made me some boards. I wanted some trays made and some uh, slatted boards. So in the wood shop, he made me some little trays like this, and they're slatted. They're made into slats, and this one turned out great, but this one, he put a thinner back on it, and it just caused the board to bow, as you can see. So I decided just to use them for practice. Uh, Trina, the rabbits are uh, resin, and they are very hard to ship. So it, if you're going to do them and ship them, you have to be really careful when you pack them, because they have to be packed big time to get them to go. Okay, This one, I'm going to show you tonight how to do crackle. We're going to play with crackle and do some different things. And as you'll see, this was slatted. This board has slats in it. So I decided to show do three colors. I'm going to do one of these just to show you how to do the colors on. Because a lot of you have been asking me to show you how to do the crackle. So I'm going to lay this one over here to the side. And this one, I'm going to put it over here somewhere too. And this morning, I crackled this uh, plate. So I would have something also to work on. So I crackled. This is a charger. These come from Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree, whatever. You can buy them wherever. And they're cheap. If you get them at the Dollar Tree, you can get them a dollar. This is the very best thing ever was to, to learn on and to practice on. Because it's big. This is about 14 inches across. And you can put anything on them. You know, the chargers, you can do all kinds of things. I paint snowmen on them make a snowman face, I make a gingerbread on them, I do all different kinds of things on them. So this would be easy to crackle, easy to show you how. And I'm going to work on one of these tonight. This one's already crackled and ready to work on. I did it this morning so it would be good and dry. Okay, so I'm going to lay it to the side. And I've got one, this one. Before you crackle, before you do anything to it, you need to base coat. And I have base coated this one. It was already white. I had sprayed it white before, so I had a coat of white under there. And that made it easier to put the blue on. And then I put the navy blue over top of it. I just put a smooth coat of navy blue on there. Took two coats to get it covered good. So you've got the white and the navy blue, and then you want to make it not sure it's smooth. Now I have another one of the boards painted and ready to do these slatted boards. And this being wood, when you base coat it, the um, nap raises up on the wood. After you put paint on wood, it gets a real furry feel. So when I got my two coats of paint on, I just went back in with my sandpaper, and I sanded the edges, sanded the top, and sand it down till it's all smooth again. So you want it nice and smooth when you work on it. Okay, so we're ready to go on that one. And I've been working on my pattern. On that other one, I'm going to put a rooster and some sunflower. So I've been working on cutting them out. But I'm going to put get the crackle on this one and show you how. Because it's going to take a while to let that crackle. you got to let it dry some. And uh, when you put it on there, you got to let it dry a little bit. So we're going to work back and forth with a few pieces. So I'm going to turn, your, uh, turn you down a little bit here so you can see more of what I'm doing than looking at me. Okay, now, the crackle medium I use is, this is Delta's crackle medium, and I've had this bottle. I, when I buy things, I buy them by the case usually, so I had three or four bottles left. I haven't done crackle for, oh, just a piece here and there for a couple years, so I hadn't used it for a while, but it keeps. It's not something that's going to waste on you. So I've had this bottle for a long time, and... Uh, I hope you can still get Ceramco products are still available, but this just happens to be my favorite one. When we started crackling back in the 80s when I done my first crackle, we used a product called Hide Glue, and it was a whole different process and a lot harder to do, but this is real simple. This is kind of thick. I'm going to put it on a paper plate. 
I'm going to just set me a paper plate over here on my palette. And I'm going to, this is, shake it up a little bit. And it's kind of a thick, gooey stuff. But this is, this is not hard. Not hard at all to do. It's very simple. I'm going to put my glue out. My mod, uh, my crackle medium. I'm going to call it glue. It is a kind of glue. I'm going to put it out on my plate over here. And it's just a clear, clear liquid stuff. Kind of thick, goopy. Okay, then I'm going to take my brush. Now, how you put your uh, glue on there determines about how your cracks are going to be. So, the more glue that you put on your piece, the thicker your cracks are going to be to, when you finish with it, okay? So, I'm going to start up here, and you got to let this glue, glue dry to tacky. So, I'm going to uh, start up here at the top, and I've got a big brush, and I'm going to just start right up here. And I'm going to crackle that, put the glue across there. Some sections I'm going to put it kind of thick so you can see what it does. And some I'm going to put it thinner because this is a board that I'm not, I'm just playing with. I'm not going to do anything to it. So I don't care if the crackle is different on it or not. But I'm dabbing it in the medium, getting quite a bit on my brush and just very lightly stroking it on my board. Okay. So I got that piece covered. Got this one down to the next one. I'm gonna put this one on a little bit thicker. Okay, I'll try to stop every few minutes and see if you ask any questions. We don't have very many on here tonight. I expected more than that. I did list a lot of the uh, designs. I got them listed. I'm I'm having a hard time finding printers that. I'm on printer number six or seven. I'm done lost count. I bought one this week and kept it three days and sent it back to Amazon. It just, it frustrated me so bad I couldn't do a thing with it. So today it went back. I'm trying to find one that the rice paper will go through without any problems. And that's, that's a problem in itself. Because printers are not made to handle that, or home printers are not. I guess if you pay thousands of dollars for a commercial printer, you'd be all right, but... You can't do that. So I'm trying to find a printer. The, the shop on Etsy where I have my designs is for digital downloads. And if you're just printing your own and print on a printer at home, you can do that by just, you know, just printing a few here and there. But I'm trying to print dozens or eventually hundreds of prints and I've got to have something that's more dependable. But a home printer for you is fine for printing your... Uh, your designs. You can do your rice paper. You can put it through one sheet at a time or you can attach it to another sheet. But the uh, Etsy shop, Maddie B Designs, is um, got all my digitals in it. And I've got some really pretty things. And then I put the ones that I'm going to print for sale in my Etsy shop. I couldn't, I mean in my on my Facebook page. So if you'll go to the pictures and then to the albums, you'll find them. And they're listed by stock number on there. So you can pick out your stock numbers. I had a lady order. I shipped her order. Sent her order out today. Sent two out today. Okay, so. Now I've got that totally covered. That board is totally covered with a crackle medium. And I have to set that. I'll turn it. See, you can have the glare. Kind of see the glare on it. You can see that I have it on there. Okay. And I'm going to set that aside because I need that to dry to a little bit of just tacky. And I'm going to go ahead and do this plate the same way so I'll be able to show you how to do it too. And this is one of the chargers. And I'm going to go the same way on here. Okay. I started on the edges, just working my way back and forth. Be sure you share the videos when you see them, girls, or whatever I've got online. I appreciate if you'd share whatever you see on my Vintage to Sheep page, if you would share it. I don't make any money doing this. If I was young, I'd jump on this bandwagon big time like a lot of these ladies. I admire them for being, they have the young you know, they're young enough to do that and to do, but I'm too young. I'm too young. 
I'm too old to start another section of my business. I've got enough going to carry me for a while. And it takes a few years to really build something up. And I don't, I, you know, I don't want to do that. So I'm really just doing some videos to help you all. But I do want to sell my designs and because I already have those and my other my other Etsy shop is still good. I have five packages, five boxes to pack in the morning. So I ship Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays every week. Okay, I'm still going now with the glue. Hey, Wanda. I've had a lot of people wanting to see crackle, and I've just put off and put off doing it. When I crackle things, girls, if I'm going to crack, spend the time getting all this stuff out to crackle and all, I choose a bunch of pieces at one time. You know, I'll sit down and maybe I'll crackle 10 pieces today of things that I'm going to be working on and, and get them ready to go. If you get it out and do one, just one, 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 one at a time, it's it's too much time consuming because you got to wait for that drying process in there to get it, you know, to get to crackle. you got to wait for that, and it's just a waste of your time. So when you get ready to crackle, if you can't find the Delta, I'm sure that uh, Folk Art and these others have a brand of crackle medium that probably works exactly the same way. So look and, you know, go online and look or look at Hobby Lobby. I haven't looked at Hobby Lobby. I'll be out there tomorrow. I'll look tomorrow and see if they do happen to have it. I'll let you know. But any of them should be any of the liquid ones. A lot of people use plain old Elmer's glue and stuff, but I never did like to do that. So I guess it works. It works for a lot of people. It's what you learn. You get used to one thing, and it's hard to change when you when you get used to something and you like it. It's real hard to change it. Okay. Now I've got that whole plate covered with the medium. The crackling is like magic when you get to see it work. It's just like it's magic when it's doing that. So we'll do that in just a minute. Now I'm going to put my brush over there in the water and I'm going to move this one over here to dry just a tad. And I'm going to go to this one as soon as I find out where I put it. The one that I already have crackled. I just had it in my hand. Up there it is. And I'm going to show you now. We'll go ahead and work on this one. Get rid of my crackle medium. And I'm going to get my pattern over here. I'm going to put a rooster. I printed me a rooster and I printed some uh, sunflowers. I did a design this evening so I would have it just to use for this and it's this. I did this this rooster and the sunflowers. So I'll have this one in my prints in my print things if you want to order one. I'll have those for you in that uh, section. But I did this one just on a sheet by itself. Did this one, and I'm going to cut him out. I've already been cutting on the uh, flowers that go around him. You could do the water thing and go around him, but if I want something more precise, I just go ahead and cut it. I use a small pair of scissors, and I try to cut as close to the to the uh, picture as I possibly can. Hello, Paula from Connecticut. Glad to have you on here with us. Hope I can teach you something. I have two granddaughters. I think I've mentioned I have two granddaughters who live with us. And uh, my, they and my son. And next week is spring break. Even though they're homeschooled, we're taking spring break next week. And we're going home to West Virginia for a few days. We've not been home for two years because of COVID. So the girls and I are going to go home and visit. Go visit the cemetery to visit where my daughter's at and go visit my sisters, my brothers, my family for a couple of days. I 
Okay, let's see. I run out of things to talk about. Work, work, work. I'm getting this. Okay. If there's something you do, something you girls, something you ladies would really like to learn that you know I do, then kind of drop me a comment some, you know, somewhere in my things, and I'll see what I can do to help you. I thought about doing a rabbit with you. If you want to do a rabbit, one of the Easter rabbits, we can do one of those. One of the groups I belong to, uh, this, uh, I found, we found a lady and I, she lives here in town. And we found each other through the group. And as it turns out, she goes to church right over from my house. So she wants to do, to paint some. And she's going to come over this week and I'm going to paint with her for a couple of hours. Help her learn a little bit. The more you share, the better it is. Everybody learns from somebody else. If you, we have a lot of great crafters online, girls, and every one of them can teach you something. The more, if you got the time to spend watching them, then do that, because everybody has their own style. And everybody can teach you a little something, even if it's just one little hint that you pick up from them. That's something you add to your arsenal of goodies, and then you eventually develop your own style. But you can learn something from everybody. And when you quit learning, you're when you're too old or think you know it all, then you're hurting. Because you never stop learning. 40 years at it, and I'm still learning new stuff all the time. Hey, Janice. Glad to see you here. Hope your mom's doing okay. Okay. Love the colors in the rooster, Barbara. I do, too. I like them bright. Glad to see you here. Hope you're doing okay. I know you're doing some renovations at home. I need to do that, too. I'm trying to get a new porch put on, and finding a carpenter around here is like trying to pull teeth. It's very, very hard. Everybody around here stays busy. I have found one guy that says possibly the first week of June, I need a new roof and to redo my porch, my front porch. I need a roof for my porch, not for my house, but I need a new roof on my porch, and I want to extend it out and make it a little bigger. So I'm having a very hard time finding a carpenter. They stay so busy around here. Building, you wouldn't believe all the stuff that's going in. The restaurants and stuff that's going in this town right now, it's booming like it's a gold town or something. Guy from Fieri, or how you say his name, from Food Network, has just opened two restaurants in town. One is his chicken, one of his chicken joints is opened in Gatlinburg. And uh, his uh, place called Flavor Town has opened in Pigeon Forge in just in the last month. So we got places popping up everywhere. Of course, Dollywood's open for the season, and she always has a new, lot of new attractions and stuff added every year. Okay. Now, I'm not worrying about cutting every little thing out of this, because once I put it toward to that white background, that's just going to kind of blend in with that. So I'm going to lay my rooster in the middle, just kind of put him in the middle here, and I got my decoupage, got my glue over here. This is just Mod Podge, and if you're new to me, I put my Mod Podge in a uh, small container. I never work out of that big thing because it will destroy what Mod Podge you have in there will be thick and goopy, and you just waste it. And I'm, I buy mine by the gallon, so uh, I... Put it in a small container. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, Cindy says, can you print to mulberry paper or only on rice paper? You can print to mulberry paper. You can, but if you're putting it on a regular project, you would probably want to put it on a project with mulberry. I have printed on some, but you want one that's thin, and I'm not sure what the GSM would be for printing on that, but I have done that before. It's been a while. Okay, here's uh, Wood Carolers for Christmas, trying to figure out how to paint faces. Oh, I do a beautiful set of Christmas Carolers, Christy. 
I'll have to get them out and see if I can find a picture to show you all. I have a set of Christmas mice that I done years ago, and uh, they're one of the things that I've kept one of. I use them at Christmas time. Okay, the plate went after I, I did this plate in uh, the navy blue, and then the over color is white. It's just uh, ceram coat. Delta's ceram coat white is what I put the over color on. So that's what what's what we're that is what we're working on. My <laughs> got tongue tied. Okay, I'm gonna lay that down there. Got me a piece of saran wrap heavy. I'm gonna lay that down there and I'm gonna hold him in position. If you've watched me before, I hold him there in position. Doesn't take much glue to put him down. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, of glue on this on my paper here. And I'm going to work. Not putting very much, not much at all. Then I'm gonna lay him down, take my fingers. Uh-oh, I wrinkled him right off the bat. Take my fingers, work from the middle out. Then I take a crumbled up piece of uh, saran wrap, cheap saran wrap. And then I'm gonna work from the center to the outside. So your wrinkles and your bubbles works right on out as you go. Okay. Work into the outside. Now the bottom's not glued down yet, so I'm going to lift that up and put a little more glue down here. Okay. Now I'm going to work that out again. Put this in here. Now I've got a few little spots there that I can see that are under, like under his feathers back here that where I didn't get any glue. So I'm going to go back, kind of pull that up just a tad, put a little glue under those wings, make sure there's some under the whole, each section. Go around here a little bit and put a little bit under that one. A little under here. Just kind of work your way around the edges and put a little bit under those edges to make sure you got it all glued down. Now I'm not gonna, I don't want to get my hands in the top coat that I'm that I'm using, gonna put over top of him. So I'm gonna wait till I get my uh, flowers around him before I put the top coat on him. Okay. Now see, I've got him glued down. Now he is pretty color, very pretty color. Okay. Now. I've got three sections, three or four sections of the uh, sunflowers cut out. So I'm going to place these around my outer edges. See where I'm going with them here. Put these around the outsides. I've got about four sections there. And I'm ready to glue those down. Okay, I'm going to hold the end up. Put my glue out here. Take this down with my finger. Push it out. Oh, rice paper girls is way more forgiving than napkins. You have to be way more careful when you're putting a napkin. If these sunflowers were napkins, you would have to be. They're real, much more delicate than the rice paper is. Rice paper, especially if you're a beginner, rice paper is so much easier to work with. Tissue paper and uh, napkins and stuff is a lot harder to do than rice paper. Okay, now I've got that one glued down. Go around here and get this one in place. Going to hold him up a little bit. Put my glue in there. Okay, now take my thumb and push it right out. See, this works real fast. Once you get your, once you get your crackling done, of course, I'm, I'm fast, girls. I've, all, I've done it for so many years, and when you work to sell, and especially when you're doing the shows, if you're working, building product for a show, and you're not fast enough to get it done, you're not going to make any money. If you make things, and you're selling them, and you're not getting paid for your time, 
you're you're really doing yourself a you're being dishonest with yourself because that that's just you know you want to get paid for your time if you're doing it to make money so be sure that you allow for the time along with the product you're using and allow for your time you should make be making somewhere between 10 to 20 dollars an hour for your time I never work on one piece at a time because that's that's a waste for me when I'm working uh, you know for production I'm working in an assembly line and working on multiple pieces so during the day I will finish oh you know a dozen pieces or more according to what kind of stuff I'm doing when I'm doing working to for production too, I work on some things that's hard that day, and then I work on some things that's so simple you can just spit them out. So that's how you keep your money, keep your decide that you know I've made three hundred dollars worth of product today or five hundred dollars. Uh, if you work on hard things all day, things that are more complicated, then you're making less money for your day's work than you would if you throw some simple things in there that you're going to sell for less money and it comes out over the period of a day it comes out you've made more money wise than you would have just working on two or three hard products okay now we'll go back and make sure all those are glued down good Got the outside of them good. I like those. The colors are bright. That's really pretty. Turns out really good. Okay. I see I'm ready to put the top coat of the glue on that one. Go in here and start with my rooster or chicken or whatever that is. I think it's a rooster. I'm going to work working from the inside out on that. And putting a top coat of Mod Podge just on the chicken. Now I see a lot of people ask, you know, about your sealer. Mod Podge is not your sealer. Mod Podge, Mod Podge glue seals your picture down, but it is not to be, you know, what you need to be using over your product as a finished sealer. That should be a varnish or a, you know, some kind of finish on there. When this is all dry and done, it needs a varnish over the whole thing to protect it. If you don't put that varnish on there and that piece, that um, crackle especially, will get dirty. And if you're you're giving that as a gift or something down the road, a few years from now, people, it's going to be dusty and dirty and you can't clean it. You can't wipe it off if you don't have a coat of varnish on there. So, you know, I see people say, well, what do I seal it with? You you seal it, you seal it, and then you varnish it. Okay. How did I get that? I see we got a few more on here. Hey, Kim and Sheila. Okay, working, working, working. Now I'll come back and accent this, put some shading, a little bit of shading, a little bit of stroke work around those flowers. They'll dry while we're doing the crackle. Then we'll come back and do a little bit of additional things to this just to kind of spoof it up a little bit. Okay, so I've got the glue. We've got all the glue on there. And that looks good. I like that. Colors are bright. That's real pretty. That blue and the red really sets it off. So I'm going to set that aside now. And I'm going to go back to my board here and see how near we are to being able to put our color on. So I'm going to close up my glue over here. And on this board, I think I'm going to do this one in two or three colors so I can show you the different colors. So I'm going to use some white. When I, um, when I use my uh, paint to over this, overcoat this with, I like it to be thin. I want it to go on there thin, so I always put, you might know, my white paint stopped up. No matter what you do, you can't keep it. I know i got a stylus here somewhere. There it is. Can't 
keep it from stopping up on you. Okay, and we'll put out a little bit of white. Come on. Okay. Okay, now let's choose another color here. Something. Uh, let's try a little bit of this green. This is like a sage. This is called blue mist. Let's try a little bit of that. Just a little bit because we're just going to have a, one board maybe down through there of that. And then let's go with a, um, let's try some yellow. I'm not going to be using this board for anything, so I will put a little bit of yellow on there. Since it's bowed, there's not much I could do with it since it's been up like it, like it has. But I told Joe, I said, well, just leave it. He said, I'll take it apart, Mom. I said, no, just leave it. We'll practice on it. Okay, now again, I'm going to a big brush. And this, your stroke work, when you do this, you don't get two or three chances. It's one, one and done when you're doing crackle stuff. And this is on here, just a little bit gummy, a little bit sticky. Okay, now I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to put a few drops of water, pick up a little bit of water here on my knife, mix it in my white paint and thin it down a little bit. And I'm going to thin each one of those. Not thin, thin. It's probably about like Cool Whip. You know, it's not paper, not thin like ink. But I want the paint to move real easy. So I'm going to add just a touch of water to it. <coughs> now I've got one more of the yellow. Okay, now, okay, I believe I'm ready to go. Now, it will start to crack almost immediately when you set the paint down on there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Had a frog in my throat. I've got a pretty wide brush. See here, I may even go to a wider one. I think this one will be okay. This is probably, this is a three-quarter inch. I would use a three-quarter inch to an inch brush on this. This one is a one inch. I think I'll switch up to it. This one's a, this is a one inch brush. You could even go up to a two inch, just according to how much you want to do at one time. But like I said, it's it's not a thing you can do over and over and over. So you once you put your paint down there, you can't. If you go back over, it, you're going to cover your crack your cracks up. Okay, I've got a rag down here, and I'm going to pick up some white paint on my brush, picking up quite a bit of paint on my brush. You see here, I got it on all sides. I'm going to start over on this side. And I'm just going to do strokes very lightly. I'm not using much paint. If you don't have enough paint the first time you pick it up, go back in and pick up. But don't go back over that same spot multiple times. Because once it starts to crack, if you go over it, you'll cover your cracks. And you will see it almost crack. You know, it's almost instant. It starts to crack. Like I said, the more glue you got under there, the bigger your cracks are going to be. And I'm doing like a feather touch with that paint. I'm not pressing down with it. I'm just doing a feather touch across there. Cracks are beautiful. if you can see that or not but it's already beginning to crackle there see the little cracks is there okay now i'm gonna go right on and do that next section too with the white now when you do after you do the crackle you need to let it dry for a few hours you want to make sure it's dry to the full extent of you know the depth of it so don't uh, don't try to work on it too uh, too soon. If I was you in the beginning, I would let it dry till tomorrow before you go back and try to work on it. See, I didn't get much glue on that one at all. So it's just we're getting little cracks.
it's not hard, girls. It's just time. Okay? Now, I'm going to wipe that brush a little bit. I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to wipe it a little bit. And then, let's see, what did you put down to make it crack? Okay, you need, Roberta, you'll need to go back and watch the replay, honey. We're using Crackle Medium. It's Ceram Coats uh, Delta, Ceram Coats Crackle Medium, and we put it on first. See, I've got this plate. See, you can see the shine on that. That's the Crackle Medium you're seeing that's on there. That's what causes the cracks. <clears throat> now, I'm going to switch over to this yellow color and do this next section. And I don't have that one quite thin enough. I want that paint to just flow on there real easy. So I'm going to go back and put a little more water in that paint. Thin it down a little bit. Okay. Now we got it. I'm going back and forth with those strokes, but I'm not stroking where it's already started to crackle. Over here, I don't want to go back over that again. So I'm working quick and going over that, you know, back and forth there. But I'm not going out. See how fast that's starting to crackle? And I'm not going back out to where it's crackled again. See, now those cracks are a little bit bigger than the first set. Okay. Can you see the cracks in that? I hope you can. See, turn different ways there. You see the cracks. Now, let's go down to the last section. Make sure I got enough water in that one. Okay, and this is a blue mist color. I'm going to wipe my brush a little bit. I'm not going to clean it, just going to wipe it off. And I'm going to go right into that section. Okay, just about got that one. Okay, I went all the way across with that one. Ooh, don't want to get that on my shirt. Okay, now. You see the crackle with that? I hope I'm turning it in the directions. See there, the yellow, you can see the cracks in that yellow. And the, the green over there is beginning to crack. Let me see if I can put my light here a little bit and let you see. See if that shows it a little brighter. Okay. Okay. And like I said, if you want great big cracks, put your glue on there real thick. Now let's set that one over here, and we'll switch over to the plate. Now I'm going to do this plate in all in white because I'll be using it. So I'm going to put out a little more white paint. And put a little water in it to thin it down just a little. Okay, and I hope the cracks on this one will be bigger because it looks like I got a lot more glue on them. We'll start up here, and I'm going to pull this over here. Very light touch. I'm just laying that on there in a feather touch. Oh, 
there's really no right and wrong with the cracks because if they're big, it's okay. If they're little, it's okay. It don't really matter. It's just that you can't go back over them and, you know, you, you got one chance to do it. And however it turns out, that one chance is what you got because you can't go back and redo it. See, this one's getting a lot bigger cracks and I like it. That blue is really coming through on that white. And I'm getting really nice cracks on that one. Keep your paint kind of thin and pull your strokes. You could put this on with a sponge and dab it. I meant to do that, but I forgot about it, so I didn't get that done. And you would get a little bit different look. Get you some boards, some old pieces of wood or something and practice on them. Just a piece of any kind of wood that you can, you know, can paint and practice the different amounts of the blue you put on there and the different strokes you do and stuff and see what you like the best. See, this one's getting big cracks. And I don't care. That blue is shining through. You want that. So I don't want it to cover. I want some of that blue to show through. You can put uh, black under it. I, I did uh, another board the other day. I put uh, black under it. The first one I showed you was black under that I'd done the colors on already. The board that's not uh, is warped. First one, it was black underneath. This one's navy blue. You can put gray under there. You put red. Sometimes I do them at Christmas time. I put red underneath there. So you can put any color you want underneath the crackle. But you do have to have some kind of color under there. So it's because it has to have something to come through. Like I said, these chargers are cheap and they're good to practice on. Plus, they make nice gifts. Oh, that was your question. You wanted me to say it. <laughs> you hear somebody, it's my granddaughter playing on the computer with a friend and talking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, now this one would definitely need to set overnight because it's got a lot of crackle under there and it needs to, each uh, part of the depth, it needs to dry all the way down to the plate so you don't want to work on it too soon. Almost got it. Okay. Well, let me put these sides here. Won't crackle the sides, but I still need to paint because I didn't get to crackle on the edges, but I still need to do the edges to get the white over there. I don't want them blue edges to be on there, so I just go all the way around with it. Now see, that one is a whole different kind of crackle. 
and I, I like that really well. See, got the great big cracks on that one. So I think that one. Gosh, there's the lady from Canada. Glad to see you here. <laughs> hey, girls, let me get some of this paint off of the table here. I'm going to have my hands all in it. Okay, what brand of crackle is that? It, this is Delta. Uh, did you put down, what did you put down to make the crackle? I to, told you that before, I think, Barbara. Go back and watch the replay, okay? Uh, and let's see here. Uh, there's two. Okay, if you got any questions, ask them while we're putting these up. Just ask me. But this is the crackle medium. And uh, hi, Diane. Glad to see you. Um, this is Delta Saran Coats Crackle Medium. And like I said, these bottles I've had for 10, 15 years. So, but I think you can still get this one. But I'm sure if you can't, there's other, the Folk Art and the Americana and all those have a kind of crackle medium. This just happens to be the one that I've already, always used. And this is, this one, it really turned out pretty. The crackle did on this one. I really like this one. And this other one, I like it too, but it's different. I had less medium on it, and the cracks are real small. See, the cracks are real tiny on this one because I put less on it. The more you put on it, the more medium you put on there, the bigger your cracks are going to be. So the thicker you get the crackle medium, the thicker your cracks. Okay? Now, while those two are drying, I'm going to flip back over to the one I done, put the rooster on, and show you a little bit more of how to accent him. Okay, and I'm going to set this one over to itself to dry. Okay. And I'm going to bring my other one back down here. And this one, I really like this. This is beautiful. What I'm going to do now, he's got a pretty good shade underneath his feet here, so I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to add a little bit to my flowers. Okay, now I'm going to make me some stems, because when I first printed them, get a print up here. When I first printed these, this had some stems pulled out here. You'll see these stems out here. And I, it, when I cut it, I just cut them off because I'll go back in with some paint and do that. Okay. So I'm going to put me out a little bit of brown. I want a dark brown. Let's see what I can find over here. Uh, let's see. I had some out today. What did I do with it? Okay, I've got a brown here. Doesn't matter what brown. This just says dark brown. This is folk arts dark brown. I've got some dark brown there. I'm going to make like some sticks. That one's not been shook up in a while. And I've already got a little bit of white out there. That one's kind of thick. Okay, I'm going to use, I can use a liner brush or one a little bit thicker than a liner. So this is more of a round. It's not really, it's not a striper, light striper like this one is long. This one is just a round size three or whatever, size two it says round. So I'm going to go in here and on my stems here, I'm going to pick up a little bit of water. Put a little water on my brush. Go over here and stroke my brush through my brown a few times. Kind of thin that down a little bit. Because again, I'm making uh, stripes with it. So I need my paint to be a little thin. Not thin as of making, you know, curly cues. But thinner than whatever. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit of white with it. Just pick up both of those colors. Got that on my brush. Then I'm going to go in here and just kind of lay down my little finger for my guide. And just pull me some little strokes out through there. Some of them I want darker than the others. Okay, some of that I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown. And I picked up a little bit of black in there. And I just pull some little, uh, really it's just sticks. So I'm mixing with brown, black, and a little white. And I'm coming in here and putting some, just like it was branches coming out of that Little sticks coming out of that flower. Kind of wiggle them. Don't just make them a straight line. Just kind of wiggle them out like a stem that comes off of the tree. The tree branch. Go in here and pull a little bit out of this one. Okay. 
they're thick and thin. They're not all just thin. It's just like seeing a stick coming out of that. But they've got some sticks tied into that. So they're just different lengths, different widths. Working back and forth with black and brown and white. So I get some different colors in there. Pull one stem out and pull another one out with it. And from the side of that one. A little bit of water, a little bit of white, a little bit of black, a little bit of brown. Just mix your colors. Not real picky. It's just a little... The more little things you do like that, the better off you are. The more little accents you put on your piece, the more it looks like it's hand-painted. See, got that one a little dark. And here, pull up a few. And you don't have to, you can go right over top of the other flowers and things that's on there. You don't have to worry. Just paint it like they're not there because it's like a bunch of uh, twigs that's been bunched up together to put those flowers together. So really you'd be covering, some of them would be covering the leaves and, you know, it wouldn't just be sticking out where there's nothing else. You want them to cover. See that? Put a couple little dark ones right here. That was awful brown. Okay, that just kind of carries it right on around there. I think to pull out that red, see I've got red in here. To pull that red out, this is the only one don't have red. I'm going to put me out a little, just a little touch of red paint. When I use red, it's very hard to get a good red, so I like Liquitex red. I use red, uh, I always bought it in the jar like this for years because I painted Christmas snowmen and Santas and stuff. This uh, Napathol Crimson uh, Soft Body Liquitex Professional Acrylics, but this little jar right now is about 30 bucks, so I've not been... I really work sparingly with that. But I did get this one as red in the tube, and it's called a Napathol, and it it's, uh, is Liquitex also. So I'm going to put me out just a little touch there because I'm going to make polka dots with that. So I'm going to take the wood end of my brush. I'm going to touch that with a little bit of water because it's kind of thick there. And I want to just accent a few little spots there. So I'm going to take the wood end of my brush and just dot it into the paint. And that one's not coming up good. You've got to get a good tip in it, on it. Okay, that one looks pretty good. And I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to go dot, 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 dot. And just kind of go up like bigger at the bottom and go up to the top a little bit. And few, put a few little speckles of red in there. Kind of putting some of these up the stems. No certain place to put them. Just whatever suits your fancy. It just makes a little more design to it. That's all you're doing.
Okay, I believe I got it. Okay. Now, see how pretty he is? I like him. I like him. I like him. So he is pretty. And you can set him on an easel. You can uh, do, you varnish this when it's good and dry. I will wait probably two days before I varnish this because I want that crackle to be dry and I want my Mod Podge and all my main paint and stuff to be dry on there too. So I will wait till today's Tuesday. I'll wait till about Thursday before I varnish this. And then I'll use the same varnish my, uh, uh, you could see it on my page there. I use Josanya's varnish. But I probably won't make this one shiny. I will use the satin. I'll use Josanya's uh, uh, varnish and I'll use it in the satin because I buy her varnish in matte, satin, and gloss. So the gloss is what I want on glass, but I don't want this. This is more of a country piece, so I don't want it to be real shiny. So I'll use the satin varnish on this and I'll put two or three coats on it between, you know, uh, to get it covered real good. And then you can either, you could put a stick on hanger on the back of it if you want to hang it up, or you could get a plate, one of those stretchy wire plate hangers, or you can set it on an easel. And I think, if you know me, I love to spackle things, so I think I'm going to do a little bit of that also. So I'm going to use my red dark. This is like uh, cranberry wine, it's called, and it's a dark, dark maroon. Put a little bit on my palette over here. Take my palette knife and put a little bit of water in it. And this I do want to be about the consistency of ink. And I've got an old toothbrush in my hand. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little bit on the end. I just sneak my brush into the end of that, the end of my brush. I've only got paint up here on the very tip end of that brush. And I sneak it right over there into that paint and load the end. Not very much on there. I've only got a little tiny bit up on the end. Then I'm going to pull the knife from the front toward me. Okay, so I'm going to just go like this. And I'm going to go right around that plate. I like these bold colors. on this one. I'll probably have to do some more of these. This one will probably sell good in my shop. Roosters are people, a lot of people, roosters and lemons and, you know, a lot of people decorate with roosters. Their kitchens are done in roosters, so I sell roosters all the time. I'm going to put any in there where the rooster's at. I'm just going to put it around this outside on top of the flowers. I'm going to leave him real bright and bold. Okay, I've worked all the way around. Put that in my water and clean my palette knife off. And I think I'm done. Let me get this other one over here and show you the crackles on it again. It's dried a little bit more. And see how this one has crackled? This one is really pretty. I like I like the way it crackled. So it'll be ready in a couple days to do again. I may put the same rooster on that one. And I'll tell you what I'll do. If you've got a way to print you a rooster, to print it out, I'll, I'll put this rooster design in the... Uh, in my comments and leave it for a few days so you that are here in the uh, in the uh, class if you want the rooster get it today or tomorrow get it you know take it out and put it in your file and you'll have it in you know to use and I'll leave it in there for a couple days so that you that were here in the class I'll share it with you okay and I hope you've enjoyed so if there's any questions now's the time to answer them Okay, didn't get the first part. Okay, uh, Fonda, go back and just watch the replay. You'll be able to watch it over and over and over. It'll still be here. And I will be selling the rooster print. 
It'll be in my files, but I'm going to share it with you. So I'll put it in my file tonight. I'll put it in the comments tonight, and you be sure you get it out tonight or tomorrow so that it's there. If you're going to be able to show up in the in the class and to, you know, to show up and come with me, I'm, I'll share that with you. So you'll have till about noon tomorrow to pick it up out of the file, okay? All you have to do is save it to your computer, and then it's yours to, to print if you want to print it. If you need it printed, then you'll have to you'll have to order it if you need me to print it for you. And it'll be in my files then to order, you know, over in my uh, section where the things are at, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed it. And I, I appreciate it. You're all welcome. I see all the thank yous, and you're all welcome. I'm glad I can do something to help you. And I'm going to be gone next week, and the rest of this week is pretty busy, but I'll I'll be back as soon as I can. You just have to keep watching and see when I'm going to be on here. I'll let you know a day ahead of time or that morning or something, and I'll see you again down the road a little bit. I did print it on rice paper. I, pr I did put my, the rice paper that I print on is listed on my page. You can see you can buy it from Amazon, and I did print on rice paper. I always print on rice paper, not on uh, not on regular paper. Let's see over here. I've got to, I had done it in different sizes, trying to get the right size that I wanted on the uh, on the pay, you know, on the thing. So I did it. Done. I even printed out a big rooster to see if I wanted. First, I got it too little, got it this size. Then I got it too big. <laughs> then I finally got it right when I was designing it. And I also did this pig this evening. So this pig would be pretty on a plate, too. He's just pig with all kinds of sunflowers around him, so he'll be in the file, too. But this is rice paper. It comes in like 12 by 15 sheets in the package, and you have to cut it to fit your printer, just cut it down to printer size to go through your printer. Some printers take it real easy, and it's got a rough side and a slick side, and you want to print on the rough side. And some printers, you have to attach it to another sheet of paper to get it through. So if you've got a printer, just play with it and and uh, see how it comes out for you. But uh, it says, did you print yours on rice paper? I did. And girls, like I said, I've got half a dozen printers. I'm sitting here looking at one, two, three, four, five in my house here right around me. I know I've got one, two, three, four, yeah, five right here. And a six. I've got another one sitting over here. So I've got six printers here around me right now. And it's, they do different things. But I've never found one that's perfect. Sometimes they jam up on me and it's just a trial and error and playing with them. I do have a son that's a computer whiz. So when I get too frustrated, I holler, Joe, Joe, come do this. Get this thing straightened out for me. And he knows how to take them apart and put them back together. So that helps me a lot. He can... You know, he keeps all my stuff running and going for me, from my computers. He can take my computer apart and put it back in the same way with my printers. Okay, I'm glad you like it, and I'm going to sign off here, ladies. So good night. Hope you have a good evening.